Hallo zusammen! First of all, thank you all so very much for watching my Rammstein Deutschland Lyrics Explanation, Translation and whatnot video. I highly, highly, highly appreciate that and I feel very humbled, honestly. Thank you so very much. If you've watched that video, you will know that I've already tackled a couple of scenes in the music video, especially in reference to the lyrics. However, this video right here is strictly about the music video, not about the lyrics. It's about what's happening in the music video, the historic scenes that are shown, and I'm gonna explain those, well, as best as I can, I guess. Fasten your seatbelts if you're ready for a little, but still quite intense German history lesson. Let's go. I've shortly addressed the introductionary scene taking place in Germania Magna around the year 16 AD before. Here we can see the band roaming around as Roman soldiers. This territory called Germania Magna, meaning Great Germania, which consisted of many different tribes and not just one single group of people, was supposed to be made a Roman province under the reign of Emperor Augustus through his Germanenkriege, the Germanic Wars between 12 and 16 AD, uh, but that didn't really went according to his plan. It was later retried by Nero Claudius Germanicus and that's probably the context to this particular scene, well, he didn't manage to conquer this territory either, and even though these Feldzüge are well known too, most Germans probably have heard of the infamous Varusschlacht, also known as die Schlacht vom Teutoburger Wald, in English the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest, which took place in the year 980, meaning a few years prior to the events shown in the intro. The different tribes basically joined forces and fought against Rome, and they won. By today, this whole event is widely considered as the inception of pretty much any kind of Germany as we refer to it back in the day. This scene also marks the first time we see the beheaded Till, which probably is an imagery for acting headlessly, meaning without a successful plan or idea, and, well, being defeated. This time by Germania herself, which resembles what I just said about the failed campaigns. After having watched the video several times by now, I think the red lasers are supposed to be what we call a roter Faden in German, a red string, meaning a common thread that runs through basically all historic German events mentioned in this video. They are more or less directly related to and almost always resulted in some kind of violence or riots. So in other words, these red lasers tie the time periods together, they are a linking element in a way. I'd say, but I could be totally wrong about that. The next scene I'd like to talk about might be one of the most enigmatic ones, because it seems to play in a potential future scenario. We see a few astronauts who are investigating old Roman statues and figures, and also historic relics such as carved writings in German, in stone, which remind of historic plates and commemorative plagues for instance. In combination with Germania, who sort of is a personified figure who represents Germany as a whole, this could be a hint to, well, a future Germania who doesn't have a lot in common with Germany anymore, up to the point of a sort of killed German identity, hence the coffin in space maybe. It might very well also be a political imagery regarding the handling of the refugee crisis and how some people feel that the German soul has gone lost because of increased immigration. That's not to say this is all my personal opinions from start to finish, by the way. I just like thinking about what this scenario could be potentially referring to. The next scene I'd like to talk about shows a battleground with lots of corpses and defeated dead Ritter, Knights, der Ritter, Singular, die Ritter, Plural. I reckon these German Knights could be so-called Ordensritter, der Ordensritter, Singular, die Ordensritter, Plural, the Knight of an Order. Both during and also after medieval times, there were quite a few German orders back then, often founded and led by der Kurfürst, singular, die Kurfürsten, plural, the elector, as it was the case for Preußen, Prussia, with Kurfürst Friedrich III von Brandenburg. Just a few seconds later, we can see the Germania as such a royal battle knight of sorts, standing triumphant against the enemies of one of the, if you will, past incarnations of Germans. In Germany, these days, der Adel, the nobility or nobleness, complex nobility structures and royalty either aren't existing anymore or they don't have any big, specific social importance to them anymore. 
The what I call fancy fighting because of the atmosphere as a whole and also because it's used for accentuating the initial drum beat after the synth intro that leads into the steady groove at around 1 minute and 52 seconds in probably dates back to later years in the industrial revolution in Germany, which began in the 19th century and lasted until the early 20th century. Well, judging from the clothing and those honorable gentlemen witnessing the fight between those two men, being singer Till and guitarist Richard, this might take place in the early years of the 20th century. That would be my guess. I reckon their fight is a graphic reference to the shifting balance between the relatively poor working class, the workers, and the rich bürgerliche Klasse, the bourgeoisie, not only appearing in quality clothing but also with bills in their hands and simply, well, portrayed by a wealthy looking Germania. This scene implies that the rich elite was basically playing workers and their interests and ideals off against each other back then. Here we can see the band members walking away from a famous German catastrophe that took place on May 6th in 1937, when the back then biggest Zeppelin, in German das Luftschiff, meaning the airship literally, which started in Frankfurt am Main crashed at the destination airfield in Lakehurst. 36 of the 97 people on board died while trying to either jump out of the descending and burning Zeppelin or dying from the flames. To my knowledge it's not exactly clear why it crashed, there are a couple of more or less plausible theories as to how this could happen. Either way, I'm talking about the famous Hindenburg Luftschiff as it was called. It was named after Paul von Hindenburg, the former German Reichspräsident. The Zeppelin was built from 1931 to 1936 and back then it was also the biggest Zeppelin on earth and therefore a prestigious project. If we look closely we can see parts of the remaining letters on the outer shell. These office-like scenes not only show members of the Stasi, the secret police in the GDR, but also leading personnel of the Sozialistische Einheitspartei, the SED, the Socialist Unity Party of Germany. Since various regulations, in 1968 this party in fact was the only allowed governing party in the GDR until the end. It was a Marxist-Leninist party which governed under a strict communist regime in the former GDR, also known as East Germany. In later scenes we can even see a massive Karl Marx set in the background. Tilt's look also reminds of the longtime leader of the GDR, Erich Honecker. At first I thought the following scene would refer to the life and times of the German monk Martin Luther, the famous Protestant rebel who nailed his 95 thesis onto the church door in Wittenberg, which was I think in 1517 AD if I'm not mistaken, which subsequently led to the separation of the dominant Roman Catholic Church into various confessions. Anyway, coming to what I think is mainly referenced here. Yeah, another sad part of not only German history but also German history. Die Hexenverfolgung and die Hexenverbrennungen, the witch hunts and the witch burnings. They took place in medieval and during late medieval times, especially between 1550 and 1650 AD. A particularly long and famous war took place during this time period as well. I'm talking about the Thirty Years' War, der Dreißigjährige Krieg. It lasted from 1618 to 1648 and it's roughly about Catholics fighting Protestants. So once again we have a religious background, a religious theme here. This reference becomes even more obvious when the band, now dressed as monks, have a little feast and, well, basically celebrate their victory over the seemingly evil witch and witchery by eating Sauerkraut, or as you might call it, Sauerkraut. The more present dayish or futuristic red fetish box underneath the table might indicate some recent criticism about certain priests and people in the Catholic and other Christian churches regarding them seeming very ordinary on the surface, but some having but some of them having problems with well how should I put it? Having problems controlling their sexual desires up to the point of sexual harassments in church driven institutions for children and even up to some rape cases. Could also be about something completely else though. Anyway, the prison scene refers to another time period in Germany's comparably recent history naming the Weimar Republic, die Weimarer Republik, which lasted from 1918 to 1933. Especially in the 20s, the early 20s, the hyperinflation, the hyperinflation, led to many Germans becoming poor, which also resulted in increased riots and insecurity. 
People neither could trust in the economy, their finances or savings anymore, the money was worth pretty much nothing. That's also why the inmates throw bills around. This hefty Wirtschaftskrise, the economic crisis, also led to the end of the Weimar Republic later on. Now to the most divisive and debated scenes in the whole entire 9 minutes and 22 seconds, the Third Reich and KZ scenes. There is a lot that could be said about these scenes and this one in particular. For instance, the rockets you see in the background refer to Hitler's so-called V2 rocket, V2. The V in that term stands for Die Vergeltungswaffe, the revenge weapon, a term coined by the propaganda minister Josef Goebbels. The around 3200 rockets the Nazi regime launched attacked several cities including London, which got attacked with about 1358 V2 rockets alone. In the foreground we see the execution of four Jewish men by hanging. Another inmate is cleaning the shoes of the Nazi general standing next to the gallows. We can clearly see das Hakenkreuz, literally translated the hook cross, meaning the swastika, and also die Judensterne, the yellow stars. Talking about the English term which includes a color, as we can see the guys have to wear different stars, which express different things. Oliver's pinkish star means he is gay. Paul's star is the common yellow star we all know from history books. Till's red and yellow star means he is a political Jewish inmate. The sign to his right says Fotografieren verboten, which translates to no photos, taking photos is prohibited. Interestingly enough, we see the Germania with the Augenklappe, the eye patch. This surely was done on purpose because this refers to the still current German expression auf dem linken or auf dem rechten Auge blind sein, to have a blind left, respectively a blind right eye, which is a common criticism brought forward by some people here and there. The criticism implies that the respective country or government doesn't want either Nazi-motivated right-wing extremists or left-wing motivated violence and crimes to be true or happen and therefore doesn't do much to prevent them from happening, or if they happened, the state seemingly doesn't do everything they can to examine facts and to solve these crime cases. In short and cynical, the things that I don't see or don't want to know don't happen. A sort of related scene is the burning of books by the Nazis in 1933. That year Hitler came into power and several Nazi groups consisting of university professors, right-wing students and party members of the NSDAP, the National Socialist German Workers' Party, burnt books that were either written by Jews or that included critical things that wouldn't line up with their strict ideology, for instance Marxist, pacifist or generally opposing works. Visually, it also reminds me of the aforementioned witch burnings, and we can even see a monk there, which might very well be a subtle hint on the highly inglorious role of the Catholic Church during the Third Reich. In a later scene, leading Nazi generals get shot, which might indicate the end of the Nazi regime. And one more thing regarding the question whether it's allowed to show some of these provocative scenes in a music video. Yes, for multiple reasons actually, and that's not just subject to my individual opinion, which is that it's better to show and tackle historic events like these even in a creative history themed video like this, or especially in a situation like this, that is better than not to include certain parts at all. In addition to my personal opinion, we have a judicial principle in Germany called Die Kunstfreiheit, the freedom of art, which can be found in paragraph 5, passage 3 in the Grundgesetz. It allows art to raise awareness of things and to be thought-provoking, which to me is the whole purpose of this video at the end of the day. In other scenes we see a modern version of Germania, basically a fashion victim, going out for a walk with her German Shepherds, der deutsche Schäferhund, singular, die deutschen Schäferhunde, plural. I guess this could be criticizing people who are very materialistic and superficial and also maybe living a wasteful lifestyle without caring too much about their surroundings, the nature or the environment. The last scene I'd like to address in this video refers to the RAF terrorists, which were a left-wing group of terrorists in former West Germany, which killed 33 people within the course of over 20 years from the 70s to the early 90s. One of their motivations was to get related inmates free through taking hostages, through kidnapping and through murdering politicians, soldiers or cops, in any case influential people. 
The letters RAF, RAF stand for Rote Armee Fraktion, the Red Army Fraction or Group. Okay, last but not least, the Molotov scenes might relate to more recent times, because some refugee houses were burned in Germany both in the early 90s and in recent years, and there are many people that don't agree with the way the current German government has handled the whole refugee crisis at all. You might have noticed that I've left out one scenario here, which is the birth of the five wolves or whatever they are. I have two very slight guesses to be honest. One of them could be that the wolves are indeed coming back to Germany these days and in the recent months and years. And the second one would be a bit more, well, distant in a way. It could refer to Romulus and Remus and the story of building Rome, I think, that's related to that. Maybe that is somewhat meant as a metaphor for giving birth to a new Germany, in a way, to the future. Maybe those really interesting scenes are related to that because I think Germania is the one who's giving birth here, so... Hmm. And also I'd like to know what you make of the holy Germania figure with angel feathers, like her being an angel, pretty much a saint. Maybe that is related to the Deutschland, Deutschland über allen line, that during certain days certain Germans have thought to be superior to others. Maybe that's related to that, but I might be quite off here. I don't know. At first I and my good friends get Germanized and Jesselyn had planned on, well, making a little video analysis video together, but unfortunately I didn't have the time to join them. However, I want to recommend their video to you as well. You can find a link to that in the video description. They talked about the whole video for about, I think, 55 minutes, so highly recommend it too. I hope you've enjoyed this little history lesson from a random German guy on YouTube. I don't know. Once again, thanks for watching, for your interest and for taking the time to watch my videos, because that in a way is an honor on its own, I think. And don't worry, of course, there will be more Rammstein videos to follow in the future. Thanks for watching, I'm your vlog Dave, tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.